Welcome back and thank you for joining us for part three of this tutorial on how to apply for scholarships, awards, and bursaries using our scholarship and awards management system, or SAMS for short. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the process of reviewing and completing all the selections in your SAMS awards shopping cart in order to submit your application for entrance scholarships, awards, and bursaries at the University of Regina. All right, let's continue on. After selecting Go to My Application, you'll be taken to your shopping cart to begin reviewing the awards and completing the various award requirements. Just a reminder that you'll need to complete all the award requirements before you can submit your application. Our system allows you to apply for all the awards that you feel like you will qualify for with one application. So it's a more streamlined process rather than needing to complete several applications separately. On the right hand side, you'll see three buttons, save, next, and previous. Whenever you hit next, your page will be automatically saved. It's always a good idea, however, to use the save button to save your progress as you work on the application. First, let's look at the panel on the left-hand side of the screen. This is your shopping cart. You'll see that your shopping cart is split into two sections. First, the awards that I'm applying for, or as I like to think about it, the list of awards that you have in the shopping cart and any award-specific requirements. And two, the section I must complete, or as I like to call it, a checklist of all the general requirements that one or more of your awards require. The checklist will only populate with requirements if the awards in your shopping cart list it as a requirement. For example, because two of the awards in your shopping cart require you to complete a financial disclosure, that is why you see on the checklist a section titled Financial Disclosure. More on how to complete these sections will come later in the video. The very first thing you should do is review the awards and their requirements again. You are just checking to ensure that the awards in your shopping cart continue to be the ones that you feel like you will qualify for. This review is especially helpful as sometimes we can populate the shopping cart and prepare the required materials before returning days or even weeks later to complete the application. By reviewing again, you are ensuring that your originally added scholarships are still relevant to you. Complete any sections found directly under the awards. These sections are there because they apply only to the award that they are under. In other words, they're specific only to that award. For example, the Allen Blakeney Entrance Scholarship requires students to have their high school principal complete and submit a reference letter. This reference letter will only apply for the Allen Blakeney Entrance Scholarship and no other awards. Because reference letters must come from the referee, the person required to write the letter, all you need to do for this section is select yes in the response to the do you meet this requirement question. Ignore the submission option completely for reference letters. Notes on reference letters. One, ensure that you're asking the correct person to complete the reference letter. If the award requires that it be your principal, then it must come from your principal, not your teacher or guidance counselor. Two, ask the referee early to write the letter. They're busy people and you'll want to ensure that they have time to write you a really great letter. Three, Provide the referee with the parameters of the award, some information about yourself relevant to the requirements, the deadline for the submission of the letter, as well as the email address for where the referee needs to send it. In our case, the email is safa at uregina.ca. And four, make sure to ask them to include your name and the award that the letter goes with in their submission email. We will need to be able to know who the letter is for and what award it is responding to. Here's a pro tip. Bring the, bringing the referee coffee or a treat is a great way to show them that you appreciate their help. Another section that could show up under the award is the personal statement or essay. This is completely separate from the personal statement in the checklist section. It shows up as an other requirement because this award is asking for a personal essay that is much more specific than the general personal statement listed in the checklist section. Read the award carefully and make sure that you're responding to the award requirements in your statement. For example, the Jolita Pacers Entrance Award requires a personal statement that outlines how you've overcome adversity, such as being a single parent, having a disability, experiencing economic difficulties or challenging family situations, or as an immigrant coming to Canada. 
This specific personal statement will be uploaded in this section using the Files button. You will not need to include this specific award criteria in the general personal statement under your checklist section as it is addressed in the awards personal statement separately. Most of the other requirements sections merely ask if you meet the requirements, in which you should select yes if you do, or to include additional information. For example, the CAA Saskatchewan Entrance Award requires students to confirm that they or their parents are CAA members and if they've participated in a school safety patrol program. Once you have reviewed all of the awards and completed any sections that showed up directly underneath the award listing, it's now time to complete the checklist section of the shopping cart. I would recommend that you make a note of these sections and complete them in a separate document before you include them on the actual application. This way you can work your way through the requirements and have them reviewed by parents and teachers to ensure they are the best possible quality. Now let's go through each of the sections in the checklist that could populate based on your award selection. Just a reminder, if the awards that you added to your shopping cart do not call for a particular section, for example a personal statement, it will not appear in the checklist. For these examples, I have curated my shopping cart to ensure that it includes awards that will require a variety of sections for the purpose of this demonstration. Your individual shopping cart may look very different. The first section that will appear is the declaration section. This is where you declare that all the information you've provided in the application is true and valid. You also consent to the U of R sharing this information with the award selection committees and donors. We take privacy seriously at the U of R and do not share your data with anyone outside of who the declaration states. We also comply with all provincial privacy acts. Be sure to read the declaration so that you are informed and comfortable with the policies it contains. If you have questions, you can reach out to us. Respond to the prompts at the bottom of the page. The next section that could appear in the checklist is the financial disclosure. I recommend that you complete this section after you've discussed your educational funding plan with your parents or supporters. By discussing your financial plan with your parents or supporters, you'll be able to get a sense of A, if they have some savings, RASPs, or other funding options for you already, or B, what other funding opportunities are out there and available to you. For example, my parents were not able to pay for my education at all. So with their help, I looked into other funding options, including applying for a student loan and a student line of credit. Having this conversation in advance of completing the section will allow you to have a better understanding of your personal financial plans and needs. The financial disclosure is used to assess your potential income for the upcoming fall term, not your entire first year. So when determining amounts to enter into this form, budget for one term. One way to do this is to divide by eight. A typical academic year for most students is divided into two terms, and we often plan for a degree to take about four years, which is eight terms in total. That being said, each student has a unique situation and goals, which can change over time, so estimate to the best of your ability. Do not stress if your dollar amounts are not accurate down to the cent. It is separated into two sections, expenses and resources. Under the expenses section, we use a different criteria to estimate how much school is going to cost you. We use the same basic parameters as Saskatchewan student loans. Under the resources section is where you disclose what resources you have access to in order to pay for your first semester of school. Let me show you how to complete these sections. First, under expenses, indicate what faculty you're planning to study under and the number of classes you plan at this time to register in come April. Remember that one standard class at the U of R is equivalent to three credit hours. Next, indicate which living option will best represent your potential situation in the fall. There are four options. One, a single student living away from home. Two, a single student living at home. Three, single parent student. And four, a married student and spouse. Sometimes students will say to me, I'm in a relationship. Does this mean I'm not considered single? The short answer to this is no. In the eyes of the government, unless you are legally married or have claimed common law status, you are considered single. So although I have a partner, I'm still considered single by the government. We use the same criteria. So for this example, I chose the faculty of nursing, indicated that I plan to take 15 credit hours or five classes in the fall term, and that I am a single student living away from home. 
List the number of dependents living with you if you indicated that you had children. Include any other expenses such as alimony, child support, disability expenses, or medical expenses not covered. Do not include car payments, rent, or credit cards. Include an explanation, if possible, for any other expenses that you listed. For this example, I left all of these blank as they do not pertain to my current situation. Finally, under resources, you'll indicate any resources that you currently know you have to contribute towards one term of your education. If a section does not pertain to you, leave it blank. Personal savings should include money that you have in your savings that you plan to use for school. If you have some money in your savings that you plan to use to help pay for your education, include only the amount you'll use for one term. For example, if you have $3,000 saved for university, but plan to only use $500 for the fall term, then only indicate the $500 in the personal savings section. This process will be the same for RESPs and other similar funds. For example, if your parents have $10,000 in total savings in RESPs, but plan to only use $2,000 for the term, then only indicate the $2,000 in the appropriate space. For scholarships, awards, and bursary sections, if you've already received some funds, include them here. For example, if you've already received an automatic entrance award, the entire amount can be included here as it will be applied on your student account in the fall for the term's tuition. But for these SAMS awards, you do not currently know if you'll receive any, so do not include any anticipated award funds. The same goes for band funding and student loans. You've not been able to apply for them yet, so you do not know the amount of funding you'll receive. Feel free to leave these sections blank only include funds that you know for sure you will have. If you're like me and every section under resources is blank, that's okay. Once you've completed all the sections on the form, select the save button. This will populate the forms with totals based on the criteria that you completed under expenses and resources. Just a reminder that these totals are estimates. We all have different circumstances that will dictate our financial plan. Next is the personal statement. A personal statement is where you talk about your goals, skills, and why you are the right candidate for the award. For this section, I recommend that you refer to the notes you made regarding 1. which awards require a personal statement, and 2. what activities or interests they want you to talk about. This could include discussing your leadership activities or extracurricular involvement or participation in athletics. You will combine all of the information required for each award that requires a personal statement into one statement. So in this example, there are three awards that require a personal statement. The Agnes Stevenson Cook Award asks for applicants to demonstrate involvement in the community as a volunteer. The Alan Blakeney Entrance Scholarship wants applicants to demonstrate leadership qualities within institutions such as student government. The Professor Peter Ventre Entrance Scholarship asks for applicants to demonstrate their contribution to the sport of rugby. You must now include those three requirements into one personal statement that is no longer than one page in length. You can find the personal statement requirements by reading the award criteria. Feel free to have a teacher, parent, supporter, or guidance counselor read over the personal statement to check for spelling and grammatical errors. Sometimes these supporters will even remember other things to include in the statement that perhaps you forgot to include. You can upload a Word document or PDF using the upload button on the screen under the personal statement section. Next, you will complete the extracurricular and volunteer sections. At the U of R, we separate extracurricular and volunteer opportunities. For SAMS applications, extracurricular activities will be where you enter all the activities that take place at school or on campus. In other words, something that is organized around by your school. When completing this section, it might be helpful to create a spreadsheet that lists all the extracurricular activities that you participate in and the different positions that you currently hold or that you have held in the past. I would organize that spreadsheet by each organization or group as that is how you will fill out each blank form in this section. For this example, I was heavily involved in Students Against Destructive Decisions or SAD in high school. This is how I would complete that form for that particular extracurricular activity. One, list the name of the organization. For this example, I've listed SAD. Two, under position, I listed all of the different positions I held in SAD. So throughout the five years that I participated in the club, I was the secretary, was part of communications, the event planning committee, fundraising committee, and treasurer. 
Then include the rough start and end date of your involvement in that group. It doesn't have to be exact, just an estimate of the date. Lastly, indicate your involvement in the group if it was for school, work, or volunteer. Please note that a part-time job is not counted as extracurricular involvement. When the form has been fully filled out, you can select the next button and a new blank form will populate. Complete as many of these forms as you need until you've included all of your extracurricular activities. Then select Save and move to the Volunteer section. At the U of R, we consider volunteer activities to be activities that you participate in outside of school or off campus. This section is filled out identical to the extracurricular section. Complete as many forms as you have volunteer activities, then select Save and move to the last section. These last sections, also called other requirements, often ask the same question in several different ways, but because they're required in the different awards due to being how the award is written, just complete them as asked. For example, because one of the awards requires you to be a resident of Saskatchewan, you need to select the yes option, thereby indicating that you meet the requirement. Now that you've completed all the requirements, I recommend that you go back through each section and one, review the requirements, Two, check that all the required documents have been attached properly. Three, check that all the required forms have been fully filled out. And four, check that the information you included is correct. Now select, click here to go to final submission area. This is the last stop before you submit your application and therefore is the last chance for you to do another final review to ensure that everything in your application is correct and completed. Once you are happy with the application, you can select Submit Application. This action will send off your application to our awards processors, who then distribute all the awards and required information off to the appropriate selection committees. The selection committees will then meet to select the recipients of the awards. Please note that once you submit your application, you can no longer make changes to it. SAM's awards for entrance students are due on March 15th. If you submit your application well in advance of the deadline and realize you've made an error or want to update it with new information, please email safa at uregina.ca. They can easily unsubmit your application for you. However, after March 15th, this option is no longer available. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out. We're here to help students and want to ensure that you're successful. Want an opportunity to see a human being go through this process in real time? Keep an eye on our website for upcoming SAMS Awards workshops. Thanks for joining, and I hope to see you soon.